Hi everyone. So our topic this week is to talk a little bit more about equipment. We talked about tractors and implements in a bit more detail and I really want to show you three pieces of equipment that we have here today. We've got a skid steer sitting over here. You may classically hear of it referred to as a bobcat. Bobcat is really just a brand name. So this one happens to be a bobcat. Um, but we will talk about uh, a number of different manufacturers that might be out there. Walk you around this skid steer. Uh, and again, hopefully make you a little bit more informed uh, on this piece of equipment. We've got a tractor sitting right here. Uh, this is a, a great tractor. This is a Massey Ferguson. It's got a loader on the top, uh, front of it. Uh, it's something that I would say is essential for any farm or ranch. This has a PTO shaft on the back. This is probably your most versatile piece of equipment, that skid steer kind of being second there. And then lastly, we'll go over this loader that we have. This loader is dedicated solely to having this bucket on the front. There's no PTO shaft on the back of it. Um, but we'll walk you around this. I brought this out today because it is a hydrostatic transmission, and I want you to see that hydrostatic transmission as compared to this tractor that's sitting right here. Uh, it does have a, a pin on the back, not quite a true draw bar, but you could pull something behind a sled or some type of other attachment. Uh, but it does articulate in the middle. It's a little bit unique uh, in how it operates. So my hope is we'll walk through uh, each one of these pieces of equipment, do an actual walk around, show you some different components to them, uh, and then we'll hop inside and I'll show you how to start each one of these up and how to operate them. And that'll be kind of what we, we have planned for today. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and move over to our skid steer and we'll walk around it. Okay everyone, so I've got you here at our skid steer and I want to talk to you a little bit more about some various components uh, to this. Again, this happens to be a Bobcat brand, John Deere, Case, New Holland, they all make skid steers, but they're all going to look the same, okay? In terms of this cage that's around them, they've got mostly two arms on them, uh, tires or tracks, and then uh, some type of bucket or attachment on the front of them. Uh, but they're all going to have a similar look, there's different sizes to them of course, and I want you to know some of those basic components. This one happens to be a cab skid steer, uh, and so this one has a door on the front, glass on both sides, uh, as well as the back. A little bit more luxury. You don't need that on a, as a skid steer on farm. Uh, it does have the heat, the AC, the radio, air ride seat, everything that is nice to have, um, but again, it's not necessary. So all skid steers are gonna have the cage all the way around them. They just might lack this glass door on the front. There's pros and cons to that, okay? We'll talk a little bit more in terms of the operation of this here shortly, um, but when you have a load uh, attached to this, maybe your bucket is raised, you've got a ram bill on the front, as soon as these arms move up, you can no longer open this door right here, okay? Uh, and so you can get trapped in one a little bit more uh, with one that has a cab on it versus being able to sneak out of another one. Um, but again, it is nice to have that during the winter time, especially here in Colorado. We've got a bucket sitting on this uh, today. You've seen from uh, things I've shown you in the past pictures, there are so many attachments out there for skid steers. If you can dream it up, I guarantee you it's out there. We've got pallet forks for this. We have an auger for this. We have uh, hay spears for this, a number of different things, a street sweeper. Uh, and there's a set of hydraulic ports on the front here that you can attach anything. So our auger attaches to this, our street sweeper attaches to this, but this is kind of that auxiliary set of hydraulic ports, okay? This one has an electronic quick attach. Uh, and so a lot of your older skid steers, We'll have simply two levers that sit right here. The levers still exist, but they will manually pull up to unlock this attachment and then push down to lock that back on. This one is all electronic from the cab. So again, nice convenience uh, in the middle of winter. You never have to get out of this cab. You can drive over to your attachment, push a button and be easily throw those arms up, back out, drive over to something new, push a button again, and it folds those arms back down and locks them in place. And so that's just, again, a little bit of a luxury that we have. We'll talk about the inside of this here shortly, but let's go for a little walk around the outside of it uh, and just point out a few different components, okay? And so these are the, the true arms to this skid steer. Majority of all your skid steers are going to have two arms like this. I say that because we recently uh, have worked with uh, JCB uh, and Ron's Equipment, who has a, a lot of JCB products, uh, and they have moved over to a single arm skid steer, okay? They modeled that after their telehandlers. They've been making telehandlers for years. Uh, and the advantage to that is because it is a single side arm, it's that single side arm is actually a bit bigger and beefier than say two, uh, but it now has an access door on the side. And so when I talked that you might get stuck in this cab a little bit, if your load is anywhere in the middle of that door and that bucket's not all the way on the ground or up above the cab, you can't get out. Okay, the advantage of that single arm from JCB is the fact that you can get in and out on the side, okay? Um, but classically, you're gonna see two arms like this. If you're ever working on this skid steer and the bucket is up, you can lock this in place. Most of them have some type of locking mechanism as a safety uh, to make sure that never comes down on top of you. 
This one happens to have tires. You can get tires or tracks. Um, do realize if you are spinning a lot in a skid steer, and so we'll talk about that operation and uh, movement of it uh, as we uh, get in it here shortly, but if you're spinning a lot, you will wear out these tires pretty quickly, especially on hard ground, anything like asphalt. Also, you can get tracks. Tracks are great if you're in really muddy environments and you might lose traction with these tires, uh, or maybe if you're on grass and sod a lot where you're, again, trying not to tear up that ground, those tracks will also be advantageous. Uh, tracks are a bit more costly in terms of initial purchase and obviously a replacement of, uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. If you don't truly need those, uh, most people are gonna have tires on their skid steer. Okay. And so we'll walk around and just show a few things in the engine compartment that sits back here. Again, we don't need to point out everything, um, but one thing to note, uh, it is diesel. Uh, every skid steer that you guys find is going to be diesel. We talk about every tractor on the market uh, these days that you would go out and purchase is all going to be diesel aside from those lawn and garden tractors. Uh, and so make sure you keep that in mind. On many farms and ranches, there's two separate tanks. One's unleaded uh, and one is your uh, farm diesel uh, or any diesel for that matter. Do make sure that's what you are filling with. Okay. Sometimes we have questions with new employees that we have. What is this? Is it gas or diesel? The last thing you want to do is fill it with something that's uh, wrong. Uh, we talked about equipment maintenance recently uh, and keeping track of those records and knowing when to change that oil or, or uh, hydraulic oil or anything else. One thing that I really do recommend and like is to write on those filters. You can see this one had service performed on February 21st of this year at 294 hours. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also write when that next service was due based on the schedule interval. Um, but I really recommend writing on those intervals. If you want to use a software to keep track of that as well, you can, but this is a, a great means to be able to keep track of that. This one right here, you can see engine oil dipstick. We can pull this off, wipe it off with a rag and easily check our engine oil. As I told you, it's a good thing. It's a good habit to check that on a regular basis, if not daily, okay? Come over to your tractors, your trucks, your skid steers, just pull that and make sure you have oil uh, in there, okay? That's the last thing you want to do is to be running that engine uh, while it's lacking oil. Uh, everything else on here easily accessible in the engine compartment. Uh, I can see starter, I can see alternator, a number of different things. It's all packed in there. This has air intake on the top. One thing nice about this skid steer that they started putting on, every once in a while that will reverse and all of a sudden blow all the dust and debris off the top of this grate. Uh, it does get built up on here and so if you don't have that option on a skid steer, do make sure you go back every once in a while and clean off this grate. Otherwise, again, you're hurting the air intake itself and you're not getting an, an the good amount of clean air that's coming in that should be. And so with that, we'll close this one up and we'll walk over to our tractor uh, and talk a little bit more about that, okay? You can see on the back, we've got brake lights, uh, reverse, everything else. This one will beep as we back up as well. And so talking about our, our tractor right here, we'll start at the back and then we'll walk around to the front of this tractor. Um, this is a Massey Ferguson tractor. It's a 103 horsepower tractor. It's a true farm tractor as we talked about those subcompacts, compacts, utility tractors up to that farm tractor. Um, do realize when we talk about that 100 horsepower tractor, we've got fewer horsepower back here at the PTO um, because some of that horsepower is being used for the alternator, uh, for the AC, for any other components on that uh, as well. So let's talk about some of the things on the back of this tractor. And then like I said, we'll move around to the front. Uh, majority of your implements that hook to the tractor uh, are going to hook to the three-point right here. If they're not hooking to the three-point, they're going to hook to the draw bar that sits right here on the bottom, okay? Uh, but they're going to hook to one or the other and then likely still utilize uh, either hydraulics or the PTO shaft, okay? And so in regards to the three-point, we'll show you how that operates inside the cab here shortly. You've got your two side arms right here and then you have the center link. Okay. Your side arms are what are actually doing the lifting and the pulling. The center link is really controlling the angle and pitch of that implement. And so this is a screw mechanism. Basically it's threaded on this end and this end. As you turn the center, you can extend or retract the length of the center link. Okay. One thing that's nice about uh, most of your larger class uh, three-point hitches uh, is as you're backing up to an implement, sometimes it's really tough to get these exactly lined up with uh, the implement itself. And so many of your farm tractors allow you to extend these arms out a few inches to be able to better attach that implement. And so these are something that if you push down on them, you can easily pull these in and then retract them. And again, if you pull this out, it allows me to then connect that pin on the implement. Once I get back into the cab and before I take off with the implement, I would back into it completely and we would lock it into place and then you're set to go, okay? Uh, in terms of also hooking up those implements, I'll show you here momentarily as we walk around. There's a raise and lower button on the side of this, as well as inside the cab. 
Uh, and so again, if you need to also make some minor adjustments, you can do that from outside here, okay? A few other things that I want you guys to be familiar with on the back is you've got a number of hydraulic ports that sit right here, okay? Lots of your various implements are going to use hydraulics. Uh, maybe you have a batwing bush hog that is hooked to the drawbar right here. It's got basically a single set that's gonna raise and lower that entire deck. Uh, and then another set that is going to raise and lower the wings on it, okay? Um, our drag uses three separate ports, okay? Um, and so most things are gonna have an in and an out uh, unless gravity is feeding it back down itself. Um, these are all going to coincide. So this is one, two, and three. These are all going to coincide with levers inside the cab. And so based on how many levers I see inside the cab, I can pretty well tell you how many ports there's going to be in the back. Okay. Do make sure that your hoses and your attachments are clean uh, before you connect them to these ports. We're not trying to introduce dirt into this system uh, as well. Beyond that, I told you a lot of these tractors, this one does not, but a lot of them have sight glasses on the back that allow you to check your hydraulic oil. And so it is important that every once in a while you check that hydraulic oil again. If it does have a sight glass, usually there's an upper and a lower line, making sure it's between that. Uh, if it ever gets to that bottom line that you add hydraulic oil. Sometimes you might have uh, an implement that blows a, a hydraulic hose, okay? All of a sudden hydraulic oil seeps out, you're losing that from the tractor and that drivetrain as well. And so this one just has a dipstick, okay? And so this one, we don't need to read it in its entirety, but it simply has a dipstick right here that you could pull out. You can then look at it right here and say, yes, we've got an adequate amount of hydraulic oil in there uh, and we're good to go. Uh, whether it has that or a sight glass, like I said, it is something that you need to check on a regular basis, okay? So aside from our hydraulics on the back, here is our PTO shaft. Um, this PTO shaft, as I told you, majority of your implements are 540 RPM, okay? So when you see the larger splines all the way around this, just by looking at it, I can tell you that's what it is, okay? Most of the time you can remove these two bolts and that becomes reversible. The other side of that would be your 1000 RPM. This one right here has a switch that allows you to simply change that from 540 to 1000 uh, as well, okay? Um, but that PTO shaft is something that many implements will hook up to. I don't care if it's that auger or that bush hog or anything else that you could think of on the back of this tractor. So that's a great thing to have when we talk about that farm tractor is you've got your PTO shaft on the back, you've got your hydraulics, and then we've got that loader on the front. And again, it makes it that very essential, uh, versatile piece of equipment for any farm or ranch, okay? And so that's the back end of this tractor. Uh, we can walk around the side just before we leave this, just to show you right here is a raise and a lower, of course, tractor's off right now, but a raise and a lower of those three point arms. And so as you're hooking up an implement, if you need to raise or lower it even a couple inches, it's very easy now to do from the back of the tractor. This is something that uh, they started putting on many tractors uh, that used to only be on the inside. And so this is a great convenience of something to have, okay? We talked about inspecting your tires for any bulges, cuts, anything like that. These are good agricultural tires, uh, but they are expensive as well. So make sure you take care of them and that you're constantly looking at that. Um, we walk around this. Again, any tractor that you purchase these days is always going to be diesel, okay? Any tractor on the market that you purchase, okay? Uh, and so this is where your diesel fill would be right here. Some of your large farm tractors have hundreds of gallons in terms of tanks, so you might be out in the field all day without having to go back and actually fill up, okay? This is a tractor that does require depth fluid, uh, and so many of your uh, trucks these days require depth fluid and a lot of your tractors would as well. It all depends on the horsepower range and what you're purchasing and whether it's going to require depth fluid. This one happens too, and again, this tractor will tell you when you're getting low on depth fluid and we can add more. Um, we keep that uh, in stock here. Um, you can see on this uh, tractor here, we've got two filters sitting in here. Just to show you right off the bat, uh, again, these are ones that uh, we've written the hours on them. So this was done at 1625, uh, and on March 17th of this year, they were serviced. And so again, a great thing. Preventative maintenance is something you have to do on equipment. As we talked about, things are going to break down. You cannot stop that, okay? Um, but you can do your preventative maintenance. You can change your engine oil, hydraulic oil, that fuel filter, etc. And so knowing when they were done and when that next service is, is something that you have to keep track of on any farm or ranch, whether you're the owner or just somebody working on that, okay? This is a removable loader. Uh, and so that's something that is uh, pretty nice. You can see these pins that lock in here. And so this simply attaches to uh, the front end of this tractor. You can take it off. Uh, we oftentimes take it off because we have a lot of employees here uh, that when dragging forget where that's at. Uh, and so it's easier for us just to remove it. We attach it today so that you guys could see that. Uh, and so this hooks up here, you'll see the hydraulic hookup uh, on the other side. 
tractor weights. You could also see from the front, especially when we remove this loader, if we had a big bush hog sitting on the back of this, uh, or any other big three-point implement especially, uh, we really need this front weight to be able to counteract that force. Uh, we saw that reveal or something else. If we didn't have this weight, it might pick the whole front end of this tractor up, becomes very loose on the front end steering. And so we've got a good set of weights sitting on here. This is uh, the front bucket here and a quick attach. Now again, the nice thing that Massey has done and a lot of other tractor manufacturers have followed suit as well, is this is a universal attachment bucket. And so that means that skid steer bucket that you saw over here will fit on this, okay? And then this would fit on the skid steer. I'm not saying you would maybe do that because of the width, but the point being, I could use the same set of power forks for that skid steer as I could this tractor. To me, that's a great marketing and selling point. We used to have a bucket that was for our new haul and a different bucket for our John Deere and a different one for the other John Deere, okay? Uh, and same with hay spears because they all had different attachments on the front. And so really, to me, it's a great thing that they're moving over to this universal attachment. This one is not an electronic quick attach for inside the cab. This one is manual. And so this one has a simple pin that you would open these on both sides and then you can easily come back over to it and lock that back down okay so it's going to be a manually open them up back out of that implement but you hop back out of the cab and lock it back on and so pretty easy to still do it's not a big uh, a big deal that it's not electronic um, but that's how you're going to attach and remove this bucket your smaller little subcompact tractors uh, and some of the even compact ones because they're so small they don't want you putting these other attachments on the front and so they may have uh, a bucket that is actually welded on to the front or bolted on uh, and not quick attached. But that quick attach is really nice. If you're out purchasing a farmer tractor, I would look for a size that, have, that has that because there are so many attachments that you can put on the front end. You can get an auxiliary set of hydraulics that also sits on the front of this loader to be able to attach an auger to the front of this or a snowblower to the front or anything else uh, that you want as well. And so we've got a good size bucket still sitting on the front of this tractor. Uh, again, depending on the size of the bucket uh, and the tractor's capacity, you're going to have various breakout strengths as well as various uh, lift capacities and heights, okay? And that's something to keep track of. We oftentimes want to know the height of, say, this loader attachment versus that one over there. How high can we stack hay? How high can we stack panels? And so that's something you're going to want to shop around for when you're purchasing a tractor. Uh, again, you can see the weights here. Under the hood, there's not much hiding under the hood. You can check the oil on this without uh, lifting up the hood. Really, you've got an air intake and your battery sitting there, but there's not much you can't access uh, without that. We'll walk around this side briefly, though you're not missing a whole lot that you haven't already seen. Um, here is the hydraulic attachment for this loader. Uh, and so we've got these color coded so we know which one attaches to which because we do detach and attach this loader from this tractor quite frequently, okay? Uh, whereas if you kept it uh, together all the time and never separate it, maybe that's not an issue for you. Tough to see. Down in here would be our oil dipstick, uh, and so we can easily pull that and uh, check our oil, hopefully on a frequent and regular basis. And so that's the biggest uh, components of this tractor in terms of a walk around. We'll jump over to the loader, and then we'll talk about operating each one of these pieces of equipment. Okay, everyone, so now we're over at this loader, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about how this operates and some various components of it. This is a bit more specialized in terms of the piece of equipment. This I would find a bit tough to justify the purchase of on an average farm or ranch because all you get is a loader bucket or various attachments that could go on the front, still from your pallet forks to hay spear, etc. If you are doing a lot of loading per se, moving hay bales around, doing that, this is a great piece of equipment, but it lacks that PTO shaft on the back and those back set of hydraulics. And so for so many implements that we can pull on that draw bar or hook to that PTO shaft or that three point hitch, that's what makes that tractor so much more versatile than this little piece right here. But it's got some cool components that I wanna point out that make it a bit unique. And so we've got a very large bucket sitting on this as compared to what you saw on that tractor. And so we can haul a lot more in terms of we're emptying the manure pit to we're bringing shavings over from our next door facility. Uh, a lot of tasks. This is nearly twice the size of that bucket over there. And so we have double the efficiency on it, okay? Now, as compared to that tractor, it is minor. This is an electronic attachment. Now, this is not universal, okay? Caterpillar, in this case, who makes this uh, loader right here, has their own attachment, okay? And so the bucket, the hay forks, the pallet forks, uh, anything that attaches to the front end of this is specific to this and only this, okay? 
It does have an electronic quick attach, and so all you have to do is push a button inside the cab. We can unlock the pins on this, drive up to it, and then reattach it, push that button, and lock those pins in place. And so that is nice. We don't have to get out of that loader, okay? This has a pretty tall lift capacity, uh, as well as weight itself, uh, a bit more so than, say, our tractor alone. Uh, and so we've got an auxiliary set of hydraulics up here. Honestly, we don't have too many attachments that really hook to this, and we use the auxiliary set of hydraulics, but it is nice to have that there, okay? Now, this is a hydrostatic transmission. We'll show you the difference to this as compared to the tractor when we get inside the cab. It is also something that is articulating, okay? If you remember, I talked to you about a tractor that was made by Newhall, and that was his TV140. It articulated in the middle. This does the exact same thing. And so where this pin is right here is our pivot point, okay? And so as you turn the steering wheel, these front tires don't turn, okay? We basically have hydraulics that are pivoting this entire tractor on this center point, okay? And so if you look dead center between these two tires, that's where you see that pin and this tractor is going to pivot as such. Where this also comes in handy is when you have something on the pallet forks or the bucket and we're doing a lot of projects and I need to move just one inch or two inches to the left or right, all I really have to do is turn that steering wheel inside the cab and that front bucket is going to change in that direction. You can't do that on the tractor, okay? There's no moving it left to right. You turn in your steering wheel has no effect then on that bucket. You would have to then to move two inches to the left uh, with your pallet forks, back up and then move over two inches to the left. And so there are some advantages to this as compared to that tractor, but you'll see that articulation to it uh, as we start operating it and moving it, okay? We'll walk you around the back again. Both of these tires are the same. It's not that classic uh, farm tractor where you've got a large ag rear tire uh, and then a front tire as well. Notice the back of this loader, how it's a bit different than say that tractor that you saw, okay? On the back of this loader, there's no hydraulics. There's no uh, draw bar. There's no uh, three point uh, hitch, okay? And so it only has this pin right here. And so we've hooked a chain through here and a sled that we pulled behind, uh, or perhaps a few other things. You need to pull something out, I'm sure you can use the loader. Uh, but because it has no other attachment on the back, to me, it's not gonna be quite as useful for you on that farmer range because so many implements, whether you wanna disc up a field or you wanna have hay equipment or you wanna have that bush hog on the back or an auger, they all hook to the back of this where you don't have that option. And so when you talk about cost comparison of that tractor versus this loader right here, that tractor's a better bang for the buck, okay? Here we've got our entire engine compartment. Again, back here on the filters, you can see the same thing uh, we've written on them. This one was uh, done on October 16th of last year at 11.38 hours. Uh, and so again, a great thing that I highly recommend keeping track of. Uh, everything's packed into these. I was telling you on a lot of our newer pieces of equipment, whether it be that tractor, that skid steer you saw, or this loader, and we're packing things in. And everything has sensors on them as well that's telling you, oh, your oil's low, your hydraulics are low, uh, we're overheating on this element, etc. It makes it a lot tougher to work on them yourself. Now, that being said, you can generally still do the preventative maintenance. You can still generally do oil change, hydraulic oil, fuel filters, etc. yourself. But when it comes down to larger problems, it's tough to dive into those because they are so packed in here, they become very specific now, okay? Um, we talked about um, some of these tractors uh, having block heaters on them. All of these have block heaters on them. So this loader to the tractor to the skid steer all have an extension cord and sticking out. Um, these are all diesel engines. They can be a little bit tough to start in that cold weather. Um, because we are out here in Colorado, we have block heaters on every single one. It's gonna make that starting process a little bit easier, okay? So they're all plugged in uh, overnight or again, long periods of time when we're not operating them. Um, do make sure that is something that you keep track of and before you operate it, walk around to make sure it's not actually plugged in with an extension cord before driving out. You rip this cord out of the block heater, uh, it's going to be costly and something that you then have to replace. And so a lot of times, if possible, we'll weave this extension cord through the handle of the tractor where you have to actually get in and then you say, oh, it's plugged in, I'll walk around and then actually unplug it, okay? But they all do have block heaters on them. And so that's a little bit about this loader. There's really not much that you would see from this side that's different from anywhere else around it. Once we start operating it, you'll see that articulating motion, okay? Um, so from here, I think we'll start diving into operation of starting some of these pieces of equipment and moving them around. Again, we don't need to spend an immense amount of time driving them ex exactly, but uh, I do wanna show you the individual operation of each piece of equipment. So let's dive in some of these cabs uh, and we'll show you that. Okay, y'all. So I've got you inside the, the cab of our skid steer here. 
I just want to talk to you a little bit about the main operation and starting it. Again, pretty much every skid steer is the same. You ought to be able to hop in this Bobcat or a Case or a New Holland, any of them, uh, and be able to operate them, okay? And so first things first, they're all going to have a, a seat belt, but truthfully, that seat belt doesn't need to be buckled to be able to operate and start though they are always going to have some type of lap belt. Uh, and so this that you see me pulling down right here uh, always has to be over uh, your lap. Ideally, you should buckle that seat belt for safety. Um, this does have a roll cage all the way around if something was to ever happen and it was to roll over. Uh, again, it will protect you and hopefully that seat belt is on and it will keep you in your seat. Uh, and so do always recommend that. If they don't have one like Bobcat that pulls down, sometimes it's just one on one side uh, that goes down over top of your lap uh, as well, okay? This one to be able to operate it both in driving and the bucket itself is two joysticks, okay? Uh, and so I'll try to push myself out of the way a little bit so as you can see on this one, that left joystick is going to actually drive. This right joystick is going to operate the bucket. You'll see that as we drive around here momentarily, okay? Older style skid steers, which they've moved away from, uh, basically had two arms that you would operate it with. And so both forward would go forward, both back would go back, and then we could spin in one direction of the other, uh, depending on how we pulled those joysticks. The bucket on these older model skid steers was actually controlled by foot pedals, okay? Uh, and so I still sometimes like those, uh, but everything we've moved over now to is one skid or one joystick doing the driving uh, and then one joystick doing the bucket itself. In terms of starting them up, again, they are all diesel engines. Most of them will tell you a wait to start. And so as we turn the key halfway, again, it's beeping at us for some planned maintenance. Okay. And so we're clear to start. Again, we've given our diesel engine enough time to warm up those glow plugs. We're gonna go ahead and start it up now. So, hopefully you guys can hear me now um, and talk to you about a few basics, okay? So the engine started, but even if I push underneath these joysticks, pull this, nothing happens, okay? Most of them are going to have a parking brake. So this one currently parking brake was off. When you pull this lap belt up, truly it engages, which keeps you from rolling as well. But making sure the parking brake is off. And then on Bobcats, there's a button that says push to operate. And so when you push this green button, you'll hear a click. So we heard a click. This lights up now. Our door is actually open in here now still. So that's closed. Um, and from here, everything can be operated. And so this is going to, uh, from here, do our, well, the door's still open. Okay. And so this one won't let you operate it as that door is open. That's one thing tough about a, a cab one as compared to one that's not a, actual cab you don't have to deal with that uh, but now that we've done this again you can see that our bucket uh, is actually operating now there's two ways to adjust throttle on this most all your skid steers are going to have a dial up here somewhere that is going to change the throttle okay we generally want this when we're actually working to be up I would say at least three quarters if not full throttle if we're truly working okay the higher that throttle is the more it's pushing the hydraulic fluid around and it's going to operate much much easier if you try to maneuver this skid steer, drive it around, operate the loader, when that throttle's all the way down, it's gonna be super sluggish, okay? Um, and so we're gonna have that throttle up. For now, we've got it about three quarters of the way up. I generally like to keep the throttle up, especially when you're working with this throttle right here. Most of it, if you're just roading it, uh, there is a foot throttle as well that does that same thing. And if you can hear it changing right now, that's doing it solely off of the foot throttle, okay? And so, to operate this bucket is the exact same as the joystick inside a tractor, okay? All of them are the same. That makes it very easy. It's a universal standard. And so if you pull back, it's going to raise the bucket. You push that joystick forward, it's going to lower the bucket. And then if we tilt it to the right, it's going to, or turn it to the right, it's going to tilt the bucket down. If we pull it to the left, it's going to pull that bucket up. And so we can easily combine all these motions at once and then do whatever we want to level out ground, to move that auger, etc. This left joystick is what's going to drive us. And so if we're going to take off and drive, I'm gonna make sure my bucket's not dragging the ground. And then as soon as I push this left joystick forward, you're gonna see that we all of a sudden now start moving, okay? And so this is something that we're going straight just by pushing our joystick 
directly straight. As we want to turn, we all of a sudden just move our joystick a little bit to the right and we turn to the right, okay? All of a sudden we move this joystick a little bit to the left and we now move to the left, okay? A little bit different operation from the two joysticks that went back and forth. And so to be able to turn like a skid steer does, some wheels start moving forward, some start moving backwards, uh, et cetera. Um, but we can now, and at different speeds, we can now back up, we can go forward, and again, we can easily go in a pretty tight circle all the way around and then level it out, okay? And so it makes it very easy to be able to go back and forth. While we're going back and forth, we can operate that bucket. Um, and so if we want it to be moving dirt, which I don't want to mess up our arena right now, we can easily do this, drive forward, Again, it's a variable speed. The further I push that joystick forward, the faster I go. And if I just wanted to creep backwards just barely, I can barely pull that joystick back, do something, and again, go super slow, okay? If I wanna go faster, I can pull it all the way back, and now all of a sudden, we go faster, okay? So it's pretty easy to be able to operate a skid steer, simple joystick, forward, back. This is gonna control left to right. Honestly, it's gonna spin a little bit, uh, but if I wanted to go directly left and not forward, I could take this to the left and it's going to tilt us directly to the left as well, okay? And so the more you do that, the more you're going to tear up ground and so we're not going to really spin around, but you could spin 360 degrees with this skid steer right here, okay? And again, loader adjustment. Now on this one, to be able to detach, I will show you this. I'll show it to you while you guys can see it. Uh, in the actual video right here. And so these two pins right here, if I put this, uh, these are my uh, lift arms right here. If I lift these up, it's going to lift up that attachment. So you see those two arms come up. Now, if I bring this attachment in this bucket down, again, I can easily come out of this, okay? And so now you can see there's nothing on here, okay? And so I can then go up to my pallet forks, I could go up to my hay spear, my auger, whatever I want, okay? All I have to do is then drive directly back over to my bucket, get directly in the window, raise it up, and then as I'm back in, now all of a sudden I can lower this back down and we're locked in, okay? And so we've done that now to be able to attach our bucket, but we could put anything on there that we wanted. We can go ahead and pull our throttle back down just for conversation here. And again, you're going to see the hydraulics operate a little bit slower uh, now that the hydraulic or the throttle is down uh, as compared to when it's uh, up nearly all the way. That's about it inside the cab. If you were to operate something off auxiliary hydraulics, we could turn on our auxiliary hydraulics, operate our auger, our snowblower, anything we wanted, you guys. Again, this is nice. It has heat, AC, it has a radio, but all of that's uh, pretty minor and not what you need to know in terms of being able to operate it. Um, many of these skid steers have a key. These key, you can enter some, a code into a keypad. You can lock out other individuals. Uh, they're pretty cool these days. Um, but that's the basic components to being able to operate a skid steer. So any skid steer you get in, you should be able to pull down that top lap belt. Um, and then all newer skid steers, left joystick to drive, right joystick to operate the bucket. You can swap controls if you really want to, but that's the classic, okay? Um, older ones, they might be the two joysticks and bucket is operated with foot pedals. But I want you to be able to get in any of these and hopefully be able to figure it out. They're all going to have a throttle that sits somewhere over here on this column. Cats is a little bit up high. Um, but just look around and hopefully figure out those basic components. So with that, let's go hop in the tractor. Okay, everyone. Real quick, one thing I wanted to add about the skid steer um, is because it has such a short wheelbase on it, there are weights on the back that you saw to counterbalance uh, what that load might be in the bucket, but because it has such a short wheelbase, you really have to be careful about how you're carrying a load. And that's one important thing that I point out that's different about the skid steer as compared to maybe that tractor or that loader. And so if you have any type of load on the front, it's a bucket full of dirt, it's a round bale, anything, always, always, always carry your load as low as possible, okay? Now, you're not trying to drag the ground with your round bell or your dirt or anything like that, but carry your load as low as possible, okay? If you carry that load and you've got a round bell above your head or something like that or a load of dirt above your head and you start moving around, you will start rocking that entire skid steer back and forth. 
the easiest way I can show you that is let's detach the bucket here in just a moment. You'll see how light this really becomes as well. Uh, even without anything on the front, you'll see this tip in a very uh, easy fashion. And so uh, I can't stress enough, whenever you're carrying a load, carry it as low as possible and that will be the safest approach for you, okay? And so real quick, I'll detach the bucket and then we'll just show you what that looks like. Okay, y'all. So we're now sitting in the cab of our Massey Ferguson tractor, and I want to show you around the inside of the cab a little bit and some of the basic components to this tractor, and really that you should find in most tractors, regardless of manufacturer, and trying to just get your bearings. And, uh, and hopefully you can hop on, uh, again, that John Deere, Massey, Case, New Holland, anything, uh, and be able to operate. And so first things first, if we look at this one, this is not a hydrostatic transmission. Um, it is going to be a synchronized manual. Uh, and so this over here is our clutch, and then over here is our brake, okay? And so truthfully you have a left and a right brake left brake right brake you've got a pin that sits down here if we go look that could easily be flipped over and then we can engage both the right and the left together okay and so now if we push one they both go down you can split them as well okay you also have foot throttle over here okay so this foot throttle that sits right here is also going to be the same as this throttle, okay? So if you're running that PTO shaft uh, and it needs to be run at 540 RPMs, as I was telling you, you need to use this throttle right here, okay? There's no way that you can use this foot throttle, keep it at the exact right RPMs, you're bouncing around out in the field. This down here, for roading this, okay? If you're going down the road, sure, you can use this throttle all you want, okay? You're hooking up an implement running that PTO shaft. This is the throttle that we're using. Can you still use this going down the road? Sure, okay. But this allows you a little bit more variability, okay. And so those are the basic components to where your clutch is, your brake is, and the actual foot throttle itself. Right here is just our steering wheel tilt. And so we can then take this and put our steering wheel uh, to the height that we would want, okay. Again, and showing you around the cab a little bit more, tough to see. Hidden up under here would be our shuttle shift, okay? Again, this is great for these tractors, okay? If you're doing a lot of movements back and forth, uh, forward and backwards with your uh, loader, this is something that right now is sitting in a neutral position. We can pick it up and go forward. This is in forward position. It detents back to neutral, pick it up and pull it back. We're in a reverse position now, okay? And so this is what that shuttle shift is. We can show you that as we're operating, okay? Not much else you need to know on the front end. As we walk around this a little bit more, this right here is our loader joystick. It's gonna be the exact same as that skid steer you just saw. Pulling back is going to raise the bucket up. Pushing it forward is going to lower the bucket. To the right is going to dump it and tilt it down. To the left is going to bring it back up, okay? Uh, and that universal action of it is what makes it so easy that you can hop on any tractor uh, and be able to know that motion, okay? Now, this tractor right here, uh, when we look at transmission type, I told you it was a synchronized uh, manual. And so a little bit tough to see, but this lever right here does our range. And so if you look down here, you could see that it basically shows you uh, a rabbit and a turtle, okay? And so we have two ranges, we have a high and a low, okay? And then if we came back out and you were to look at our gear shift right here, you see six gears. And so we have essentially 12 gears forward and 12 gears reverse, okay? You have six gears in the high, six gears in the low, in both a forward and a reverse. And so that's this tractor, okay? But I want you to be able to hop on any of them. You saw pictures of our John Deere's that had an ABCD range and then four gears within each, okay? They were 16 gears forward and 16 reverse. Uh, and so make sure you can distinguish right off the bat what you're dealing with. Uh, if we walk around a few other things, again, throttle, you're gonna see somewhere over here matches that foot throttle okay 
this is going to be adjustment of uh, the three-point hitch. Uh, and so we've got these stops engaged on this right now, but we could easily loosen one of these, push it forward. And again, this is going to raise and lower the three-point hitch in the back and those side arms, okay? It's not going to affect the center link, but it's gonna raise and lower those side arms. Yellow button, if you had to guess, is what? This would be your PTO shaft, okay? Most of these is to push in and turn to engage it, and then you could just hit it if you wanted to, and it would disengage it, okay? But you're usually gonna find a yellow button on the right-hand side somewhere that is PTO. We see three hydraulic levers, okay? These coincide with those three hydraulic ports that you saw on the back of the tractor previously, okay? And so you could hook up a number of implements to the back, uh, hook them up to the hydraulics, and know that you've got a port for each set. Uh, we've added a handle. A lot of them, again, might come with two, and they have an open slot. You can add a third set of hydraulics to them as well. These two came on the tractor. This one was added. You can see that handle looks slightly different, okay? This is just a, a bit of a draft for our three-point arms uh, if you were to do a lot of uh, box blading, digging, etc. And then we've got our laser level attachment on the back. And so that's your main walk around of the cab. We'll go ahead and talk about operating it. One last thing I will show you uh, that comes up uh, as we look at this um, is basically that uh, that locking differential many of your tractors have a locking differential uh, this one sits right here and so all we have to do is push down uh, this little lever with say the heel of our foot uh, and it would lock that differential okay uh, and so many of your tractors somewhere down underneath the seat uh, have a mechanism to be able to lock that differential and so now let's talk about starting this thing up and we'll drive it around a little bit Okay, y'all. So now that I've shown you around the cab a little bit, uh, I want to show you, we'll start this up uh, and then we'll talk about some basic operation of it. Okay. Um, and so really we'll go ahead and start it up. We've got the clutch depressed. Um, again, as long as something is in neutral, we've got our shuttle shift in neutral. We could take this. This is now in neutral as well. We don't have to have our range. Um, some people would tell you, you gotta have everything in neutral, but uh, truly you don't. Uh, our shuttle shift is in neutral. My foot's on the clutch. I'm not too worried. This is in neutral here in terms of our actual gear shift. Uh, and so at this point, we can go ahead, we could turn our key halfway. Uh, it's going to go ahead and start everything up. We've got our glow plugs active right now, um, and we'll go ahead and turn it over. Okay, so hopefully you can hear that tractor running a little bit. Um, again, we've got our bucket down, and so I'll switch the camera view and show you uh, facing front here momentarily. I uh, just wanted to show you one quick thing as we've got it going. Up here are a number of different lights. Uh, and so on most of your big tractors, if you're out working in the field at night doing things, we've got nice big LEDs in the front of this tractor, on the back of this tractor. Uh, and again, we can easily turn on our front and rear lights. Uh, I can already tell, even in this well-lit arena, we've got lots of light out front and out back. Uh, we've got some washer fluid uh, and windshield washer uh, wipers uh, for the front and the rear, as well as a, a defrost. We've got heat and AC inside this cab. Uh, and so again, that's a great thing to be able to have uh, if you're out working in the winter time, trying to do something in the field or around your farm or ranch. And so let me put the camera on the back just so you guys can see us as we're moving forward. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit just briefly about this operating, uh, changing of gears, moving the loader, etc. Okay, so I've got you now where you can see the, the front of the tractor. Um, again, this is our loader joystick. And so very easily, I told you it's the same motion. Uh, we pull back, loader goes up, push forward, it goes down. Get where you can see it again, tilt to the right, it's going to dump, tilt to the left, it's going to bring them back up. It's the same motions that you guys saw on the skid steer, same with every single tractor, that's what makes it so great, okay? And so if we're going to operate this, I don't want to dig any dirt right now, so I'm going to keep this elevated off of the ground. I've got our clutch depressed. Uh, we are in a, let's check, we are in a high gear right now, um, and we could put ourselves in high two, move our shuttle shift to forward, and then now, as soon as we depress the clutch, we should move forward, okay? Uh, and so if we all of a sudden depress the clutch, you can see us moving forward now. And so, again, we can give it more throttle with the foot throttle, and you can see us moving along, okay? Pretty easy. This throttle right here, you can see all of a sudden that let off, stops. This throttle right here on the side does the exact same thing, okay? So truly, if I'm running that uh, PTO shaft on the back, I can adjust this throttle right here, match my throttle that you see over here to 540 RPMs, and then based on the gear that I choose, whether I choose to be in 
high six or high two, that dictates my true speed, how fast I'm going around this arena or in the field or whatever that may look like, okay? And so this one, again, to change ranges from high range to low range, you do need to stop this tractor, okay? To be able to shift from second to third to fourth and so on or downshift, truly it is a synchronized transmission. Uh, and so we do not need to uh, actually stop, we can just simply clutch. So if we shift from second into third, we can go ahead and clutch now and pull this into third and then move through there. If we wanted to go to fourth, again, we can go to fourth and then we don't have to stop. It's synchronized through each gear, okay? And so it's just a matter of shifting around. Uh, if we want to downshift, Again, we can easily come back to third and then let off of our clutch and we've downshifted to third, okay? And so if we want to come to a stop, we can depress our clutch and go ahead and push that brake. Again, if we're going to actually uh, come to a stop, we always have to make sure we clutch just as you would any car. This is now sitting in neutral. I don't want to be quite in a, a high three. We could put it in high two just to show you. I can then We'll go forward for a second. And so if I let off the actual clutch, you can see us go forward. I can go ahead and depress the clutch and I can pull my shuttle shift to reverse. And then you can easily see, I can then go in reverse, okay? I'm backing up, I'm gonna dump something into a bucket. I can put my shuttle shift back into forward. I don't need to come to a complete stop. I can basically roll back and forth. I'm more or less clutching because I wanna slow down, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to go completely one gear to the next. But that's where a shuttle shift comes in handy, okay? If you are doing something at the manure pit, and you want to be able to go back and forth to load in and out of the trailer back to the manure pit or you're loading shavings or you're moving hay off of a trailer again that shuttle shift is great to be able to go back and forth all while doing that you can operate the loader as you're going into a pile to grab anything okay uh, and so great things about that tractor. It's not that hard to operate. Hopefully you understand some basics now uh, of operation. Again, if we were going to go from a high to a low range, we would do this at a stop. Um, I would be clutched and I would basically just pull this lever now from rabbit all the way back to the turtle that it is. Now we're in our slow gear, our slow range, our turtle, we can operate one through six. Okay. Uh, and so easy to operate. Uh, I want you to be able to get in a new tractor, look at the transmission type. If you see a clutch, you know that you've got likely a newer tractor, a manual synchronized transmission. Some of the older ones are not synchronized. You still gotta come to a stop with each gear. Uh, but most of your new tractors are going to be synchronized. Uh, again, expect on most of these, they're going to be synchronized, shifting between each, maybe not between the ranges though. Most of those ranges, you may have to come to a stop. Just depends on the tractor manufacturer uh, and what that transmission type is, but hopefully you guys can figure that out. We could raise and lower our three point uh, from here. This would be that throttle that we have. I can adjust that throttle all the way back down. We got our hydraulic ports that are sitting over here, PTO. Uh, and again, those are the basics to this tractor. Uh, and so hopefully you, you know a little bit more about this. Let's go hop in the loader uh, and we'll show you some of the basic operation to that loader. And so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back uh, in gear and we'll go ahead and take off and I'll, I'll show you that loader next, okay? And so, Hang in there, y'all. One more piece of equipment uh, will operate for you guys, um, and we'll go from there. Thanks, y'all. Okay, y'all. So we're now sitting in the loader, and again, this is a little bit different in the way it maneuvers. One, that it's a hydrostatic transmission, and then two, when you turn this steering wheel right here, the front tires don't turn, it's articulating, okay? So you've got hydraulic cylinders that are pushing on each side, one's retracting, one's pushing uh, out, uh, and allow it to actually articulate uh, in the entire front end, and you'll see that action here shortly. And so one thing just to point out uh, as you get in, you're trying to figure out a transmission type. On this one, you don't see the number of pedals that you did on the tractor. So this one, there's no clutch, okay? What we have over here is a brake, and what we have over here is our, essentially our throttle and our accelerator. Now really, on most hydrostatic transmissions, truly once you let your foot off this accelerator or throttle, it comes to a stop pretty abruptly and rarely do you ever need to use this brake over here unless you really need to lock it down quick. Um, but you only see those two pedals over here. Notice when we got in the tractor, you had clutch, you had a right and a left brake, and then you also had that throttle which matched some type of throttle up here uh, that we could set at if we're running something on the PTO or we need a, a bit more of a static RPM, okay? That doesn't exist here, okay? And so you get in here, we can tell it's a hydrostatic transmission. Um, 
Now we'll operate it here in a moment just to show you. This is a, a steering wheel tilt. We'll pull down here, uh, pulls the entire thing. You can see it's pretty uh, uh, vertical right now. This would be our loader joystick. Again, I keep telling you that skid steer, that tractor, this all operate in the universal standard. That's what makes it uh, possible for me or anybody else to be able to get in one of these pieces of equipment and know that pulling this back raises that entire bucket up, pushing it forward, lowers that entire bucket, taking it to the right is going to dump it and taking it to the left is going to tilt it back up. They're all the same, no matter the piece of equipment. And that's what's so great. Okay. This one though, it's not labeled. This is our, our simple forward neutral and reverse on this uh, tractor right here, because it is a hydrostatic transmission. And so let me go ahead and pin the, uh, camera onto the back where you can actually see a little bit of the articulation. We'll be sure that as we drive this around, you guys see that motion from the outside of the actual loader. Uh, and we'll talk to you about starting this thing up here in a second. Okay, guys. So when we talk about starting this up and operating it, I'm going to go ahead and tilt my steering wheel down a little bit. Um, and from here, as long as this is in neutral right here, we're going to go ahead and turn our key halfway. You'll see all of our lights kick on. It beeps. Our glow plug symbol is going to go away. Parking brake is on, uh, and we're going to go ahead and turn it over. And so it's now running. This thing's pretty quiet on the inside, and so I'm not sure if you guys can hear that running. Parking brake is still engaged. It's just a lever over here on the left-hand side. Not much that's fancy. We can basically take that. Our little parking brake symbol goes off. Um, this is our loader joystick, as I was telling you. And so again, tilt it to the left, uh, or turn it to the left, tilts that bucket up. Pulling it back towards us is going to raise it just as it was in that skid steer. And as you saw in the tractor itself, pushing it back towards you uh, is going to lower it down. And again, to the right is going to dump it. And so we can easily do all of those actions as we're driving around. Again, this one uh, is just simply an accelerator down here. And so real quick before we're going, I'll show you this from the outside. Let's just look at the articulation of it, okay? And so without actually moving, if I take the steering wheel and I move it all the way to the right, you can see how it pivots in the center, okay? I have not moved one bit, okay? But now this tractor uh, or this loader is essentially sitting like this, okay? We'll take it all the way back around to the other side and you can see this articulation, okay? And so from here now, we go all the way to the other side. And that's where I said, if you just need to have loader forks on or the pallet forks and move two inches one way or the other, you can easily do that with that articulation. And so that's a little bit different. Your front tires are not actually turning uh, as you would see on a standard vehicle or a tractor, okay? And so all we have to do to operate this, it's super simple. We put this, now shows you 2F, which is forward, and we basically just push that throttle or that accelerator. And much like a car, now I can operate this loader as I drive around, much like a car, the harder I push it, the faster I go, okay? And the more I depress that, you can see if I let go all the way, it comes to a stop pretty quickly. I did not touch this brake, okay? And so rarely do you need to actually touch that brake unless you need to come uh, to a stop pretty quickly, okay? But again, you can see the articulated movement of this. You'll see it from the outside. There's no actual movement of those front tires. It's all that articulation, okay? And so we can easily come over here. Now say we're going to load something up here. I can easily come in here and then all of a sudden put it in reverse and back up. Say I want to then go forward. I can then flip this back to forward and we can take off in this direction. And so if you're truly doing a lot of action with that loader and I'm moving round bales up or something like that, I can easily come up here. We can then move forward and talk about moving into our trailer, dumping whatever we have out front, uh, et cetera, okay? And so very easy to be able to operate. There's really not much to uh, a loader like this. Uh, and I wanted to show you the basics of something with a hydrostatic transmission. Again, we've got our accelerator throttle over here. It's just a matter of pushing it down. It's a variable speed. Um, and from there, uh, you just drive wherever you want to go. We'll simply turn our steering wheel, but it is different in terms of how it articulates. Our joystick that sits here. Now, over here on the right hand side, not sure that you guys can see that in the picture, we have a simple button that is our unlocking pins for our bucket attachment, where we could go hook up uh, hay spears uh, or something else of that nature. Um, but very easy to operate. This also has our radio, heat, AC, air ride seat, uh, pretty standard in a lot of cab tractors, uh, but it is nice to have. Uh, again, this loader to me is a bit more specialized, unique. 
uh, it doesn't have the hydraulics and the PTO on the back, but if you are truly using a loader, uh, this is a very efficient piece of equipment. And so with that, I hope you guys learned a good bit today about various pieces of equipment from our skid steer to our tractor um, to our actual loader here. And I hope you have a great rest of the day and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much.